Hello and welcome to the big picture. The new Narendra Modi ministry has been formed and portfolios allocated. The allocations have come in for mixed reactions. While the attempt to downsize or what some would call as right-sizing of the ministry has been done, it's a matter of debate how it will all work out. There are some controversial decisions in allocating portfolios which are bound to result in a major debate. How will these controversies be faced and what will be the challenges before Modi and his new ministers as they go about establishing their presence and authority over their respective portfolios? We will discuss all this today with Professor Pushpesh Pant, political analyst and former professor at JNU, Sachidananda Murthy, resident editor of The Week, Vinod Sharma, political editor of Hindustan Times, and Sheila Bhatt, senior editorial director, news at redip.com. Welcome to all of you. Professor Pant, first question to you. You think that the, the, the way the portfolios have, have been al allocated, you think the right persons have been given the right portfolios? Uh, by and large, I think it is quite true. Uh, but I think, you know, so much is expected of Mr. Modi that he will perform a miracle every passing moment. I think uh, we expect too much from him. If you look at the, the top four uh, portfolios, they were more or less along predictable lines. Right. You have Sushma Swaraj, you have Jaitley, you have Rajnath Singh, you have other people like Nitin Gadkari, you have people, some surprises you might say so, like uh, Smriti Irani after uh, getting defeated from Amiti, getting uh, a cabinet berth. But I think it's understandable because she cut Rahul Gandhi to size. I mean, she did um, uh, reduce the majority um, of the victory margin from 4 lakhs to just over a little over 1 lakh. So I think she was awarded for having preferred to go down fighting in the battle, electoral battle. And I think Nirmala Sitarman might surprise some people, but I think she had done an absolutely first-rate job as far as BJP and Narendra Modi are concerned. So the loyalists have been rewarded. The experienced people have been given some posts. If you ask me personally, I'm uh, as a Uttarakhandi, I'm feeling very um, orphaned sort of. <laughs> we, we had three chief ministers in the fray, all of them won and none of them got the seat. We had a first time um, uh, MP, he was not uh, preferred either. And we had a bit of a royalty from Tehri, she was not there. But one can't be sort of having these parochial considerations is ultimately the Prime Minister's prerogative. And I think he has chosen uh, a very nice mix of experience, talent available to BJP and the newcomers. Vinod Sharma, do you think that some of these, uh, do you have any specific instances or you know in, in this allocation of portfolios where you would have a problem? You think that, you know, uh, as Ms. Professor Pushpeshman says, that he has used whatever talent has been available to the best of their, best of his ability. I think that, uh, you know, this, uh, this Council of Ministers, uh, Mr. Pant, Dr. Pant has only, only mentioned uh, his state, Uttarakhand. But I think many hill states, uh, hill states are without a representation. Uh, some in the Northeast and also Himachal, uh, where all the four seats were won by uh, the BJP, as was the case in Uttarakhand. But that is, I think, a minor uh, flaw which can be corrected because this uh, Council of Ministers should be taken as a rough draft while the final draft will shape up over the next couple of months where you may see some changes in portfolios and people or some fresh inductions. But I was uh, pretty pleased to see uh, Najma Abdullah walk up and take oath. Uh, I think that an attempt has been made to give a semblance of some balance, social balance uh, in this Council of Ministers uh, because uh, they drew her out of their Rajya Sabha pool because they didn't have a member of parliament from that social group to, from which she comes uh, in the lower house. Uh, but in so far as allocation of portfolios is concerned, uh, I slightly disagree with the learned professor. Uh, you see, it is not as much of a reward in some cases. It is also a convenient arrangement. Uh, if, if you look at it more closely, uh, the three people who have been given nice, good portfolios and who, fi who, fi who fall in the younger slot uh, namely, uh, Nirmala Sitaraman, Piyush Goyal and Dharmendra Padhan. Yes. Uh, they are all people who uh, have a good working relationship with the finance minister, namely Mr. Arun Jetli. And these people would be uh, functioning under the broad guidance of the finance minister. In so far as Smriti Irani is concerned, I am sure she will do a good job. She is a young person, she is intelligent. Uh, but in the HRD ministry, she would be reporting if we use our terminology directly to the editor, while the other three will be rep reporting to the chief of bureau. <laughs> so, uh, and there you see the interface, which may have become imperative between 
certain elements in the Sangh Parivar and her would be avoided because their interface will happen at a superior level uh, and their broad direction for uh, carrying out those, uh, uh, those policies uh, or whatever uh, would be conveyed by the Prime Minister directly to the Minister for Human Resource. So I think from their state, it's a very intelligent arrangement, I would say. Uh, uh, <coughs> and that should about that, that that's that that's about it. Okay. I mean, to read more into this uh, would be rendering unto Caesar, which is not Caesar's. Sheila, you know, Smriti Irani. In fact, in the last couple of hours, there has been about about her educational qualification. She is the HRD minister, and apparently, her you know she, her education quali qualification is twelfth standard pass. So you think this is going to come in the way of her, you know, being able to assert her authority in the ministry? See, I look at a broader picture. I understand this particular case, but I still find it very interesting. Uh, it's a daring uh, decision of Prime Minister Modi. I think it's a very exciting thing because India is changing. And uh, changing India is not applying all standard and tired standards of having minister and prime minister and cabinet minister and political leaders in a very conventional sense. So I think Modi has taken that kind of a view and he's because Narendra Modi and BJP has got a huge sect section of uh, young voters supporting them and giving votes to them. So I think that kind of a India, this which is new emerging India, I don't think people will look into the bio data because they, you know, lot of wrecks to richy stories, many of them have never gone to the, I so that kind of India uh, will not ask the question no, which second, we I, ask I, in TV studio. No, no, I, just, I am just No, I just night. want to get in uh, Professor Pant because Prof, Professor Pant, you know, uh, you have been a professor in a, in a in one of the best universities in India. How do, how do you think the academic community will react to this minister who you know who is twelfth pass? I, I think Girish, I could answer that straight away. That the academic community, uh, my brethren, can either climb the wall or jump into river Jamuna. <laughs> I think they are the least important part of the progress of education in this country. I think the most important part of education in this country is the primary school education. And for that, it is not necessary to you for you to be educated in Oxford and Cambridge and Harvard and Yale and Stanford and have doctoral dissertations written uh, or plagiarized for you. I mean, I think uh, we should admit that this country will make progress in the field of human resources yes. when education is focused in an egalitarian manner, when we talk in terms of raising standards of school education, then secondary education. And then we try to maintain a level playing ground for we have a caste system in this country in the universities the central universities the state universities the private universities the private private universities which are flourishing without any recognition we have too many regulators like UG, all the fiefdoms in their own UGC the ICCR the NCERT the AICT and so on so I think if our that is not necessary and let's not forget that one of the greatest makers of modern India ultimately had a second grade uh, BA degree uh, the first Prime Minister of this country. So what are we talking about? Sachi? Uh, you know, in this cabinet, uh, our development of portfolio, the most important line in the communique from the Rashtrapati Bhavan is that all important policy matters the Prime Minister will deal with. That has been mentioned. Absolutely. Because either too, it has never been uh, said that because it was assumed that the Prime Minister will decide on all important policy matters and he because he decides all important, the agenda I, I, no, I just want to read what is there yeah. all important policy issues and all other portfolios yeah. not yeah. allocated to the any ministry so the normal all thing. issues which yes. means that the prime minister will decide the even the issues which will have to be uh, in the which ministries not of come finance under. defense and all that so which means he and what i learn uh, from my sources is the Prime Minister is in the process of appointing consultants, consultants within courts to each and every ministry who will be his, you know, interface, uh, interface with the ministries. So in that kind of a, the thing is that the role of the independence of the ministers is quite diminished if you have that kind of a no, no, we, system. We, we, we can still not, we can only speculate, yeah. we'll have to wait and see whether it happens. Yeah. But is that, but the, is this that particular No, because uh, you know, Sachi, the before the actual yeah. uh, you know, swearing in took place, there were huge speculations about how he would be bringing in a lot of technocrats yes, and, yes, and yes. you know, non-politicians yeah. into the cabinet, yeah. but that has not happened. That has not happened. Uh, Even because, a person uh, like Arun Shauri doesn't find uh, a place. In no, the, I think Arun Shauri, there's a technical problem, legal, because there is a preliminary inquiry by the CBI against him in the Balco decision case and I think that, that's what he is 
still tip for the defense ministry. I think in a month or two that case will uh, get sorted out. And Arun Shaudi, who has already made uh, his strong advice on who the principal secretary should be. So the two Aruns are the closest advisors of the prime minister apart from Rajnath Singh. So Arun Shaudi will be coming in. But you will look at the way the portfolio is still an, as we know it said, it's still an incomplete, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Because, um, but Arun what happens if you say it's a work in progress, what happens to the, to the dictum which, which you know, he, during the campaign he, he claimed that maximum governance, minimum government. So you think you think th there will be an expansion of this cabinet in, there in the near future? There has to be because a um, uh, lot of uh, single member parties, uh, which are uh, single and two member parties, they have been told that they will be accommodated. And he, he may not go to the full limit of the size of the council of ministers, but definitely, and you can see it by the way the portfolios are allotted. I mean, uh, Prakash Javadekar gets INB and uh, environment, which are and totally forest. unlinked. Completely unlinked. Unlinked. So, so I think there is going to be some shedding of uh, portfolios by some. Why of are you laughing? Uh, you know, and, and, uh, well, the yeah. media vitiates a lot of environment. You know, <laughs> it causes a lot of news pollution. <laughs> so I think there is some linkage there's there, but some that's on the lighter side. There. <laughs> that's on the lighter <laughs> side. But you yeah. see, uh, uh, you know, I uh, it's good that Sachi sort of underscored that one line in the presidential communique that the policy decisions will be taken by the prime minister. I mean, it would be the final word. Uh, now, that is at once good and bad, if I may say so. Because collective decision making means application of mind by all. The cabinet takes the decision. Prime minister is the first amongst the equals. And in that limited sense, this line in the presidential communique would have to be studied and followed we'll more observed. carefully we'll see why as, the, as work progresses in Absolutely. this government. And may I say that, you know, cabinet notes are put up by the ministries, you know. And then there's a thorough discussion in the cabinet. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, this helps temporize policy at times. You know, if there's one nodal point to decide policy and there isn't enough edu educated discussion at the cabinet level, uh, I think the government could run the risk uh, of having a policy which may not find acceptability at the popular level. So, uh, maybe that along the way, you see, one learns from experience and one doesn't want to preach that this government or the Prime Minister at this stage. He has to be given adequate room and time uh, to prove his promises and to deliver on them. Uh, this a time for critical evaluation may, be, may come a little later. But as of now, I think there, this, this, this one line uh, is at once promising and uh, at the same time a bit of a worry. You know. Sheila, how would you look at it? Do you have that, such kind of a worry about this line? Do you think this line is something which one needs to keep note or take note of at all? See, somehow the way we report, report on the ground, I have a feeling that uh, this ch charter of this government is economy. Economy and economy. And uh, everything will be done, I think, <coughs> in calibrated manner to ensure that inflation and investment, these two are taken care of. I think on a, for day one, when uh, today morning Prime Minister has taken charge, I think we can no, we stop not, being cynical. No, we are not and, being cynical. And I think, being no, cynical. We are only but my, my understanding questions is which are, which, you know, which have people come up. who are capable to bring 282 seats in the parliament must be having this much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, we will, we, as Vinod Sharma rightly pointed out, you know, we have to give, him, we give them time. Yes, Sachi, you wanted to... Uh, no, basically, I mean, Sheila said that this government's priority is only the economy. But then we must also realize that the economy and society go together. After all, the, why did the UPA government fall? One of the reasons was inflation there. You merged agriculture and uh, consumer affairs, food and consumer affairs. So, the, whereas the prices for the agriculture is, uh, went up and uh, consumer suffered. So, mahengai, mahengai, that was a shout. So, same thing is happening in this government where I don't know how it will work. You have given power and coal because power and coal. so. But, but, the, but the argument is that there is an organic. So if uh, they can arrange an organic uh, this thing, it is fine. The, but if uh, power producer or the coal producer, who will win in that? All that we have to see. Professor, Professor Pant, do you see any uh, you know contradictions in this kind of thing? One one more thing is that you know some people are expressing uh, maybe you know Arun Jaitley getting these three. I mean, very important portfolios, finance, defense, and corporate affairs. 
you think that there there, there could be contradictions in that or no, you I think these, these, are, these are manageable contradictions no i think I, i hope they are manageable and i don't see them as contradictions because i think as has been discussed here one of the portfolios is being the seed being kept warm for somebody to come and there is the burden going to be shared right the other thing which we must recognize is that um, call it the loyalty factor call it the trust uh, um, factor uh, mr arun jaitley is uh, closer to the prime minister than other senior leaders of his own party Absolutely. i mean one of them shushma swaraj was a contender herself for the prime ministerial uh, jack spot and she uh, finds herself in a position like hillary clinton if she can't be the pre president she can be the secretary of state or in indian context the external affairs minister right um, so uh, ultimately you know we have to see that some people will have more access, access to power and others will have less we know you know uh, yesterday the order in which they were sworn in you think that is the that's the hierarchy in this ministry yes obviously number 2 is rajnath number 3 is shushma and number 4 is jetly and that's very much proper uh, because mr rajnath singh has been a sitting party chief and former chief minister shushma swaraj has been minister for many years and arun jetly too has been minister but uh, in in relative terms she is senior to arun so that's okay uh, and we know that uh, where the hierarchy rests in this in this setup uh, you see another point that i want to make is that uh, foreign policy uh, is an important subject uh, for this government because its economic agenda cannot be it will have to go hand in hand with the foreign policy agenda because we are living in this age of uh, uh, economic foreign policy you know economy is front loaded mostly because uh, it is not as much about uh, cold war anymore uh, it is also not as much about Uh, you know, uh, uh, we trying to show that we are non-aligned. Uh, that that period is over. Uh, so I would, I would, I would expect, and I don't know how it pans out, a good working relationship, regardless of the past, between the prime minister and the external affairs minister. We have, and and uh, and, think, and, and more so because historically in India. the prime minister's office has always had a finger in the foreign office right, pie right right uh, you know be it the congress regimes or be it the nda regime of the past you know i remember when mr yashwant sinha was became finance minister uh, after mr jaswant singh uh, uh, most of the decisions were being taken in the prime minister's office because there sat a man in the in the in the position of principal secretary called prajesh mishra right. whose experience no, in multilateral you know, diplomacy no, was way ahead of others no you, I, your point is well taken but uh, uh, sachida there is if, if, i mean if they if they need a role model probably they can they can uh, you know go 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 to united states and see how the obama hillary clinton uh, it, it's almost equivalent to that kind of a situation right. here yeah, yeah. very appropriate uh, and uh, you know uh, i think sushma also knows that uh, the foreign minister has a lot of uh, leeway to contact her counterpart sadagam but then finally when it comes to a summit level meetings it's only the pm who can talk to and that i think most of our foreign minister except uh, one or two have understood that uh, that the prime minister is the primary maker of uh, foreign policy so that is there and as long as mr modi gives her enough respect you know forgetting all that old uh, this thing whether she opposed his uh, anointment and all that then i think it'll be a very smooth working and what happened to obama and uh, obama hillary, hillary clinton very well as a team would, is See, is, is that is that I the think, comparison you would make i think the selection make? of sushma swaraj is absolutely um, super excellent because i feel she is a born diplomat no doubt about it she has a terrific f- style and everything elegance to be uh, but having said that i disagree with uh, uh vinod and the point that uh, hierarchy will be is a final word in politics it's not like that who took swearing in ceremony who took uh, number wise i think authority and power as it happened you, you don't think, uh, just, you don't think just, the just, order of swearing in, in UPA, prime matters? minister was uh, our uh, manmohan singh but uh, power lied in with in the hands of mrs sonia in the same way i would th- i would like to think that the way cabinet formation was done that time if you remember the way uh, press has reported also that i think narendra modi was taking advice of arun jetli amisha on one hand on one hand radna singh rss mm. amisha and modi that link was there there was no sushma swaraj uh, 
except uh, one, once she went to Modi in Gujarat Bhavan and once. So, I am saying according to our uh, political uh, understanding, we I think the uh, Arun Jetli will have a better say, uh, uh, wait, uh, more wait. That, Maybe. That, that, we will have to wait and see. We will have to wait and see. Secondly, see, the, on this the, issue. The point I, is that the, the order about, in which they took vote, I don't they will be it, part of the... I don't think it finally it will most, emerge. The, the, the most important no, cabinet committee is the cabinet committee. No, 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 formally, no, no, formally no, yes, no. but informally no. So, uh, now, can I say one thing? The order of precedence is very clear in every government. Every government. Yes. Regardless I think, of what I think dynamics no. lead to that order of precedence. Yes, Sachi. And that, Sir, I am not in every government. Yes. Because, uh, not Mr. So Vajpayee's government, there are very uh, interesting things. Yes, it was very clear that Mr. Adwani will He's be number, number two. two. But then, after that, whom do you resonate? Number three, Dr. Murli Manor Joshi wanted to be there. Yes. Then, Mr. Brajesh Mishra told uh, Mr. Vajpayee, let's do one thing. The seating order in the cabinet, in all list, on website, everything will be alphabetical. Oh, <laughs> so, lucky so, it was Girish, alphabetical. Girish, in fact, Girish, Adwani Girish, and then no, another. I, 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 I remember, I remember that. I remember that very well. Was exactly. But, no, no, Girish, for that yeah. matter, no, no, will, for that matter, when pr Prime Minister Modi goes abroad, yeah. I think Radna Singh will take we'll the... Take uh, absolutely. That, that is the order in which we are talking about. That's exactly. No, no, I want to say one thing. When yes. the, the no, seating we'll, arrangement... We'll have to move ahead. We'll, we'll, one little thing. The seating arrangement in the cabinet we'll meetings, think. the number two sits because the his PM is on the head of the table. Absolutely. The number two sits on his right. Yeah, right. Absolutely. On his right. That is no, today two. I think we even saw so, some you know, pictures I, before. It's right down to the last detail. No, I don't we, know whether they follow it or not. No, today I, I we saw some pictures before I came into the studio and that was the order, the cabinet meeting which is taking place. Now, Mr. Pushpesh Pant, one of the other, you know, we are running out of time. One controversial appointment here. The, 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 the you know, the Minister of State from Muzaffar, Muzaffar Nagar as Dr. Sanjeev Balyan being taken into the cabinet. You think this is something which, which was avoidable considering the fact that he was, he, he is an accused in a case which, you know, which, which had raised so much of uh, passions in this country? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. I'm going. Maybe I'm the minority of one, but I think this is a political risk which Mr. Modi had to take. Um, a person having been charged of a crime, however heinous, however grave, till he's been proved guilty, I think uh, the, the, there are umpteen cases from Indian politics where you have uh, Papu Yadavs of the world being there, uh, Shah Budins being there. I mean, I don't think that you can uh, you can draw a hard and fast line there that you'd because somebody has been accused of a very heinous crime because of having been in a communal riot. The same charge could apply to uh, you could say that although various courts in this country have given a clean shit, there are people who say that this is not enough for the, even the pre pre present prime minister. So I think you know, that, that was no, a very strict. Uh, no, uh, they they had a discussion on this. I understand. Then they went by the formula which Mr. Vajpayee adopted. Mr. Vajpayee had uh, inducted some ministers. He had said that when if a charge sheet is filed in a court, then he will not have them as ministers. So, Mutaya from Tamil Nadu and Buta Singh, uh, an independent supporting the government in 98, both were dropped from the government. After. So, the same thing, that's what I've been told that uh, in Balian's okay, the charge sheet has not yet been has filed. Not been framed. Yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the Shachi's example, uh, in terms of past history is correct, but it doesn't apply here. Vajpayee didn't run, run, a, run a government of BJP's own government, you know. So the room available to the Prime Minister of the day was adequate uh, to, uh, to exclude avoid, this man, avoid, avoid. avoid this man if uh, he wanted to. But surely uh, political expediency... But there is a message in The this. political expediency has prevailed. Uh, and uh, they wanted to send a message. They got a huge mandate from that uh, state. And, they, and that mandate rode on a certain sentiment. And they didn't want to be defying that sentiment so early in the day. Sheila, how would you Girish, look at it? Uh, our, this 282 MPs of BJP, I think there is a terrific uh, deficiency of talent to run the government and improve the governance. That is, a, everybody knows, not just Narendra Modi. And uh, I have interviewed Mr. Balyan. I think he is an extraordinarily talented man. He is one of the rare politician in BJP who is so is a farmer is agitating for farmers and he's extraordinarily articulate so I think that must have been a very resisting point for Narendra Modi to select him not, and, not, but not, I agree but I agree just let me finish I agree 
that uh, collectively all the parties including BJP and also <coughs> Narendra Modi should have avoided such controversial person. But I am giving you these two reasons. That must be the problem. Okay. Uh, very quickly, sir, uh, uh, Professor Pant. Uh, allies, you think the allies have been uh, given, given the positions which they deserve? You think that they would be satisfied with what has been given to them? If you ask me, the allies have been given more than what they desire <laughs> in the present context. Sachi? No, no, no. Allies, I think, especially the bigger allies. I mean, Shiv Sena has got 18 MPs. Whatever, BJP may have 282. But then Shiv Sena has supported them winning maximum number of seats from Maharashtra also. So, I think Shiv Sena and TDP similarly has given them a good uh, foothold in uh, Andhra Pradesh. So, I think they deserve more. But then... Uh, that's why I'm saying that this work is incomplete because uh, one member, two member parties in parliament are many, including a former chief minister. Atha and uh, I, I would like to tell Professor uh, that uh, Sheila said uh, not much talent. No, there are three former chief ministers from Uttarakhand. One of them was <laughs> known as nice. the finest uh, minister for uh, national highways national and highways. all. So I mentioned this. So, mentioned so that's idea. why. So I, I think uh, the allies are demanding more. They will get more. I think uh, it will work. There was a ground rule. I, I ground heard rule that was there was a ground rule. Parties, yeah. uh, within BJP, there was a ground rule that nobody above 75 will get the cabinet. Same way for allies, there was a ground rule in NDA that for every four MP seat, they will get one MOS and for every 12 MP seat, they will get one cabinet. Okay, we know the last words to you. So, you think this is, this is, a, this is a work in progress, we will see more, more uh, additions to the cabinet or you think that the Modi would like to work within this uh, framework which he has established now? No, I don't think he will be able to work within this framework, he will have to improvise. Uh, this cabinet looks like any other cabinet in the history of India. And I think that if, so unless some improvisation comes, uh, and uh, you see, uh, the Prime Minister's office uh, gained in importance during Indira Gandhi's time. And there was a charge leveled against Indira Gandhi that she has destroyed the cabinet system of governance by having all powerful principal secretaries and an all powerful PMO. Well, maybe that it's an arrangement which works. But I think any Prime Minister's office should devolve total authority and seek complete accountability. That is the principle on which it should operate. Okay. <coughs> okay. I think on that note, we need to end. We will have to wait and watch, I think, in the next uh, maybe couple of days or, le or even less. We will know what kind of a bureaucratic arrangement the Prime Minister will have at his level and at other levels. That will also be very important to gauge what kind of a governance we, we are going to get. Thanks to all my guests, Pushpesh Pant, Sheila Bhatt, Sachidanand Murthy and Vinod Sharma. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on Big Picture same time tomorrow.